If a parent comes to a doctor's office with concerns, a screening should be scheduled immediately because I believe that it causes more stress not to screen than it does to screen. We would like to urge early referral of children who have signs of autism. This is especially important now that we have treatments that can be helpful and improve the outcome in later childhood and adult life. Kids with ADHD or autism want to be independent. Try Goalie, the visual scheduler that guides them through routines so you don't have to. Goalie, reinventing routines. The human brain is very plastic. It's capable of changing, especially before the age of five, when significant changes in the neural network are possible. This plasticity lends itself to many of the therapeutic interventions that we now have and we know work. It's so important for young children to receive early intervention services as early as possible because of that neuroplasticity of the young brain. Hey, Wendy, what are the houses made from? Straw. Straw, and what else? And sticks. And sticks, and what else? And brick. <gasps> That's right. As uh, providers of uh, primary pediatric care, we will encounter uh, children with the autistic uh, spectral disorders uh, at a frequency equal to or greater than children with uh, cancers, diabetes, uh, spina bifida, uh, Down syndrome. Uh, we think it's extremely important that we uh, uh, pick up these children early and just like these other disorders, early intervention is so very, very important with these children uh, that being able to identify them early and intervene early is uh, something that we should be, uh, should be paramount in our mind and we should be vigilant in our, uh, in our uh, assessment of these children to find, find them early. A referral of a child whom you suspect to have autism can be made to the infant and toddlers program through the local public school system. For families living with ADHD or autism, preventing meltdowns is everything. Goalie reduces stress by enabling kids to complete routines independently. Goalie, reinventing routines. Early intervention works. It works very effectively and we see the long-term outcome as the children are able to be integrated into typically developing programs, into classrooms with children who are non-handicapped. Federal legislation mandates that free and appropriate services be provided for children with autism from age birth to age 21. Unfortunately for these children, Learning to learn, learning to talk, learning to use language is not automatic. You have to teach them every step of the way. I want us to come up with a great name for our school store. I know. So, I know. wait, don't tell me. They need to learn how to learn. Most kids, when they're normal, when they're developing normally, you know, they eventually learn to say the name. They eventually learn how to say how old they are. When you ask, when Ramsey had regress, he had to relearn how to say his name. And when you asked him his age, he had to be ta taught how to say, I'm three years old. My name is Ramsey. He just didn't pick it up naturally. One, two, one, two. Three and four. One has to be able to analyze skills into component parts. One must be able to help the child learn to greet people, learn to feel comfortable being near people or other children. To give you an example, we just attended, he just attended his first wedding. And so we wrote out a story, how to go to a wedding, what to do when you're sitting during the ceremony. Whereas my other child is just a year older, I could just tell her, this is a point where we, where we have to be quiet. But I knew my son 
needed to see that in visual terms. Sometimes what we do is to watch the child, to imitate and do what the child does, just to begin to establish a level of awareness that, hey, there's somebody else here. Kids with ADHD or autism want to be independent. Try Goalie, the visual scheduler that guides them through routines so you don't have to. Goalie, reinventing routines. My son just didn't seem to be part of our world, so I decided to go into his world. I tore down everything in his bedroom except his crib and his um, changing table and the carpet. And two to three hours a day, uh, at different intervals, I would go into his room, close the door, and rock with him. That's what he liked to do. It made him comfortable. It, he would let me touch him and be in his world then. And slowly but surely, really it was rather quickly, he started allowing me to play games with him and tickle him and do some really nice interplay with him and briefly would engage in eye contact with me and smile more. And from there, we kept going. Then my husband would take turns with him. Then we would bring my daughter in with him, and then we would all be in there, and we'd bring the dog in. I remember uh, a little boy that was here, and being a speech and language pathologist also, I worked with him, and he would lay down on his stomach on the floor. So when he did that, I laid down on the floor. When he rolled over, I rolled over. When he stood up, I stood up and I saw a great big smile on his face. That was our first communication interaction. I knew verbally he wasn't processing information, so what we decided to do was stop talking, pretty much. Um, I photographed, we photographed everything in our environment, from his favorite foods to our community, the doctor's office, each doctor, each nurse, each the exam room, because he went there a lot, um, the grocery store, the bank, all the things we do in our life, people in our family, and we started giving him pictures, and we started using pictures, and that made the hugest difference in his world, I remember early on. Give me a cup. 